everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Before I introduce today's special guest, I want to thank Amy for these really cool lemon earrings and for all the other presents she keeps sending me. I don't know what I did to deserve it, but these are so cool because now I have something to match my yellow shirt. Well, today is day seven of a very special week on Chef AJ Live, devoted to the wonderful graduates of Main Street Vegan Academy. You can find out more about the Academy by just looking at the box below the YouTube video. These are called the show notes. And Victoria Moran, who is the founder and who kicked off the week, is giving a 20% discount for her October program with a code below. So we have a fabulous cooking demo today by Cindy Thompson, one of the graduates who is a fantastic Whole Food Plants a chef, coach, educator. She was on the show before and she did seafood. Well, you know, not real seafood, vegan seafood. And you can still get those recipes if you like and watch that show. But today she's going to be doing some vegan picnic recipes, including a pineapple orange or maybe an orange pineapple chia pudding, a, a salad, and something that really intrigues me because I don't know what it is, a sweet potato. I think it's called banh mi. Please welcome Cindy back to the show. It's really nice to see you again. You really wowed everybody last time. I just, I really thought you did a great presentation. Oh, well, thank you so much. I'm just thrilled to be here again. I love being on your show. I love everything that you're doing, Chef AJ. So thank you for having me back. Anytime. And I, just, you yeah. get on the, keep getting on the schedule. I sometimes forget, but like, seriously, like you, you just, your presentations are phenomenal and so are your recipes. And your story is so great because you were a fire captain. I didn't know. I mean, I mean, how many female fire captains are there in the world? Well, there are more now than when I joined the fire service. Gosh, I don't want to age myself. I'm retired now. But when I joined the fire service, there were less than 500 women firefighters in the United States. So um, there's a lot more now, which is fantastic. Um, but that was my first career. And now I'm in my second with being a health coach. Well, you're still saving lives. And in a way, you're still putting out fires, just different ones. Absolutely. I totally agree. I mean, one of the things that led me to be a firefighter was to help people and, and with their having health emergencies. And I, as a firefighter and as a paramedic as well, could see all of these lifestyle factors that were contributing to illnesses that people had. We responded primarily to chronic illness, chronic disease, heart disease, diabetes. And we have a different perspective than a lot of people working in the healthcare industry is that we see people in their homes. And so I got a great glimpse on how people were living and the foods that they were eating and, and really could see that link between lifestyle and health conditions. So it really gave me a lot of interest into lifestyle medicine. Yeah. Cause you know, a lot, like a lot of times when you see the fire truck, it's not for a fire. Correct. Uh, it's about 85% of the calls that fire department goes on are non fire calls and generally they are medical emergencies. So uh, most, most fire departments across the United States respond to uh, medical calls. And that was what we were. We were a paramedic engine company. Uh, we would arrive um, at the same time, or if not before an ambulance company, we would do the initial assessment and, and start the treatment. And then um, the patient would be transported in the ambulance to the hospital. So uh, that was the primary a thing that we did as was medical care. What do they do if there's also a fire? I mean, what takes precedence? Well, if it came in at the same time, then the precedence for the fire uh, would be responder would be to a fire because an ambulance with paramedics was responding at the same time to the medical call. Um, if we were on a medical call and a fire came in, they would dispatch the next closest fire company. Unless we were at the end of the call, um, and the, the ambulance crew would let us know if they were okay to handle the rest of the call without us. And then we would go on the fire, fire call. Wow. For, to be a firefighter, whether male or female, are there certain, like, do you have to be able to do certain things like physical feats, like, you know, lift a certain amount of, of weight or, because I'm thinking like to carry people out of a building, for example. Yeah. So when I was uh, testing to be a firefighter, there was a physical agility exam uh, that had several different things you had to do in a certain uh, amount of time. Um, and generally it has to do with climbing ladders, um, about lifting certain uh, weights, um, moving ladders, putting ladders up, um, putting equipment, hanging that up, uh, just a, a lot of different things. Some, some of them had 
uh, where you had to run in a, a mile in a certain amount of time. Um, you had to be able to connect and disconnect uh, hoses, it's just lots of different physical agility. And then we were tested every year for um, what we call a physical agility test. Um, they had different things, but very similar to that. Um, entanglement drills, um, going through confined spaces, um, wearing our uh, a breathing apparatus to make sure that we were still um, able to do that without claustrophobia and things like that. Yeah, so it was a very, very physical job. But you were you were 60 pounds heavier. You were still able to do all these physical feats. I was. Uh, so uh, I was much better at doing my job after I lost that weight. And so what led me to be plant based was a terrifying. I was terrified of getting cancer. So um, back in I've been plant based for 13 years. Um, right before that, uh, my dad died from non Hodgkin's lymphoma. Um, and it was just horrible to watch him go through that. But a year after he died, the state where I worked enacted a, what they called a presumptive cancer law for firefighters, which meant if is, you were a firefighter in that state and you were diagnosed with one of 12 specific cancers, you it was presumed that you had it from an on-the-job exposure and you were um, eligible to put in for um, workers' compensation to cover your cancer treatment. On that list was non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, but there were two other ones that were on that list were very concerning, which was multiple myeloma and leukemia. My dad's mom had died from those blood cancers. So three blood cancers that were in my immediate lineage were on that list. Now my dad or my grandmother, they were not firefighters, but I didn't know if cancer was hereditary and I didn't want to quit my job. I loved being a firefighter. So I decided to jump into the research, figure out what I could do to reduce my cancer risk and keep my job. I went to Oregon Health Sciences University's medical school library and just dove in to figure out what could I do. And I found so much research at that time that led to, uh, if I could adopt a whole food plant-based diet uh, and eliminate animal proteins, it would be the best thing I could do to reduce my risk. And I thought, well, what have I got to lose? I'm going to do it. I love my job. I want to keep doing that. I don't want to suffer through cancer that I saw my family members and I see patients that I respond to in the engine. I'm, I'm going to do it. I'll just give it a try. Well, what I didn't know is that I had 60 pounds to lose. And I, I had been somebody that my whole adult life had trouble with my weight. I would try, I tried almost every diet out there. I would get on the diet, lose the weight, get off that diet, gain it back, and then some. And I just caught to the point where I figured I was a big girl. And I would tell myself stories of, well, you know, I'm a woman firefighter. I weigh less than the men. I'm having to hold on to these uh, fire hoses. I need this extra weight to anchor myself so I could <laughs> not be blown around by the, ho the fire hose. Uh, those were stories I told myself, but I knew that I wasn't physically fit like I wanted to be and that I should be. So I was just absolutely amazed that by putting optimal fuel in my body, eating whole food plant-based, I had tons of energy. I lost weight without trying, uh, and I got to a fantastic weight. Um, I learned things about myself in that process. I learned that I, would, I ached every morning when I got up, and I didn't know that until I started waking up in the morning and I didn't ache anymore. Um, I learned that I was addicted to cheese, which was something I innately knew um, and was the one thing that people that knew me said, oh, you, you can't go vegan, you're addicted to cheese because I had said that my whole life. It wasn't until years later when I learned from Dr. Barnard um, that cheese was addictive and I knew that. I knew that for sure in my soul. Um, and I, I just, I never had had a diet where I had so much energy. And then this really wasn't a diet. Um, this was sustainable. It was a way of eating. It, it felt right. I had so much energy that I needed to find an outlet for it. And I started to run and I started to bicycle and I became an adult onset athlete uh, and got into triathlon, um, even Ironman. And it just amazed everybody around me, amazed myself. Um, and so 
from that, um, my department put me in charge of a new program called the Firefighter Wellness Fitness Initiative, which is aimed at improving um, firefighters' lives and firefighters' physical ability and reducing line of duty death from cancer and heart disease uh, and cardiovascular disease, which at the time was the number one line of duty death for firefighters was cardiovascular disease. Wow. Were you familiar with Rip Esselstyn and Engine 2 at the time? I was not. In fact, I didn't know about Rip for years. Um, and I knew about his dad. Um, the Forks Over Knives came out after I became plant-based. And um, on their first trip around the country to, uh, with the documentary, my mom and I went uh, and saw Forks Over Knives in Portland. Um, and I might have learned about him then. Um, but I didn't know about RIP for years. Wow. Do you know him now? I, I know of him. I have not met him personally. I've met his dad several times, but yeah. So we have a common interest for sure with uh, firefighting and triathlon and plant-based eating. So yeah, we have a lot in common. Did any of the firefighters you work with uh, change their diet permanently? Um, yeah, they did. So as I started to change my diet. I talked to my crew. We sat down. They had known my dad. They knew that the journey that I had gone through with uh, taking care of him. Um, and I just said, this is something that I'm going to do for myself. Um, explained my why and explained what it was. And then, you know, eating at the fire station is a big deal. It's a huge team building thing. We, we do family style meals for lunches and dinners and I just didn't want it to be detrimental to our crew. I didn't want it to be a problem. So uh, my, I still wanted to be in the cooking rotation. People were terrified because I was a good cook. I thought, oh my gosh, now we're never going to eat anything good again when Cindy cooks. So I um, assured them that I was going to eat me cooking whole food plant-based and it was going to be delicious. And they had a choice that when I cook, they could have my food either as the main dish or as a side dish, and they can cook some meat to go with it if they really wanted to. And it wouldn't hurt my feelings that this was my journey, not something I was imposing on them. And then when it was their turn to cook, I asked if they could at least have a big giant salad at lunch and dinner, which we normally had anyway. That was kind of a part of our culture and my fire station. Uh, and at my department, there was always a big bowl of salad but there was often cheese and meat in it. And I said, so if you could just make that salad without the meat or cheese, then I always have a big salad and I'll eat leftovers from what I made. I'll keep some things in the freezer. You don't have to learn a new way of cooking for me. But what happened is because they saw my journey, they got really excited because all of us were affected by this presumptive cancer law. And all of us had been touched by cancer and heart disease. We had lost people in my department from that. And and neighboring departments as well. So everybody had a kind of an interest. So my crew decided at the uh, challenge of the senior firefighter on my crew to try plant-based eating. And um, so they did that along with me and had all kinds of great results. Uh, they lost weight, they had more energy, their uh, cholesterol went down, their blood pressure went down. And that's what really led to me being put in charge of the wellness fitness program for my department. Nice. So I, that I, was great to see. I know Rip at one point had a contest to see who had the lowest cholesterol with his uh, co-firefighters. Did you ever do anything like that? I didn't, you know, and, and looking back, I kicked myself on like, Why didn't I start with an inch and 74 diet? <laughs> Would have been a great book. <laughs> well, you can still write it. Are you in touch with any of your former uh, uh, firefighters? Yeah, I hear from them, um, your, you know, Facebook, et cetera, and different events. And I do know that there are some that are still plant-based. So that's really fantastic. It's exciting to see. Do you ever go back and do a cooking demo for them? I bet they'd love that now. I haven't because um, of COVID that really kind of restricted the people that could come into the fire station. But I have been in touch with my local fire department because I don't live back where I worked anymore. Um, and so hopefully now that the restriction has changed, I can get back into um, doing some of those. And, and I would love to go to the local fire department and make them a meal and talk to them about the benefits of plant-based eating. That would be so cool. You know, I did that once a long time ago. Um, there was a, 
uh, on television, uh, there was a, a news story where a dog had, when it rains in Southern California, it's very rare. So it's really bad because people just don't know how to drive or, you know, things like that. And so a, a large dog got in, it's called the wash where and he was just being swept away by this water. And the news just kept following it like all day. Like this was like the human, the human interest story of the day. And people were just like captivated by this. And of course they wanted the dog rescued. And so there were these firefighters that had uh, like helicopters and they, they were firefighters. There was a fire station in Van Nuys. And I still remember the, the guy's name, I think it was Joe St. George. And he actually like did a heroic air rescue of this dog. And, um, and the dog actually, you know, bit him because he wasn't upset, but the dog was scared. And so he, he, he uh, Joe recovered. And it was just like, it was just like, just, you know, an amazing thing to watch. It was like watching a movie. And I had gotten in touch with him through Facebook. Cause I was just, it was just really heart wrenching and heartwarming to just like see this dog survive and his heroic rescue. And I said, Hey, I'm a chef. Um, you know, and I live, you know, one city over, could I come and make dinner for the fire station just to thank you for your, you know, her heroism. And he said, yes. And I brought some of my single girlfriends. Cause you know, there's a lot of <laughs> firefighters, but, but we made them dinner. We had just the best time, you know, and it was just interesting seeing like their kitchen and the kind of foods they mostly ate. You know, there were these big bottles of Mazzola corn oil and white bread and peanut butter. And I, I didn't try to be too, you know, uh, I mean, I, I gave me some copies of his book to bring them. And I just kind of tried to explain, you know, about eating healthier, but it was a really fun experience. But I think for the most part, they weren't interested yeah. <laughs> other than the free dinner, which was delicious because I made some <laughs> richer foods like lasagna and German mm -hmm. chocolate cake. But anyway, yeah, but I, I love that idea of, you know, going to the fire stations and uh, yeah. 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 So now I'm a food for life instructor also. So that was the one of the things I was planning to do is introduce the food for life program to the fire stations as part of their employee wellness. So I'm um, excited to do that. But yeah. Um, yeah, so today I would love to show you I've got three great recipes for picnic food, which you could have at home anytime right now in the Pacific Northwest, it's raining like you couldn't believe so I'm gonna have a picnic on the floor in my living room, but I'm really excited for picnic season to start. So I have um, three great recipes. First is a sweet potato banh mi, and I'll explain what a banh mi is in a moment. Um, I'm doing a fresh rainbow corn salad to go with it and Paragon orange pineapple chia pudding. So we're gonna start with the banh mi. And a banh mi is a Vietnamese sandwich that's served on a baguette. Really delicious, generally is meat-based and has mayonnaise on it. Um, and this one, is inspired by a sandwich that I had on a vacation or a trip over the North Cascades in Washington State in the town called Leavenworth, which if I don't know if you've been to Washington, Chef AJ, but Leavenworth is a town in the middle of the Cascades that looks like Bavaria to the point where they have really embraced the Bavarian style and have changed the entire town to look like a Bavarian village. The buildings look like Bavaria. They have lots of German food. There's um, uh, Bavarian music playing all the time. It's just a really fantastic place to go in the wintertime and the summer. And we were there during the summertime and, and I went to a restaurant called Yodelin Broth Company and they had a banh mi, which was sweet potato banh mi, and it was the best sandwich I have ever had in my entire life. So as soon as we got home, I figured out how to make it. So I'm going to show you how to make it. Um, so this uh, uses sweet potato and it has, instead of mayonnaise, a really terrific miso dressing. And so it's a sesame miso dressing. And I'm going to um, make the dressing first, then we'll assemble our sandwich. And so for this dressing, um, the dressing at the restaurant uses oil-based. It's a vinaigrette um, and I'm going to do it oil-free. And instead of sesame oil, I'm going to toast some sesame seeds to go in it to give it that really nice sesame flavor. So I'm heating up my pan and I just have some uh, regular sesame seeds so that you can see here. And we're going to heat the pan to medium heat, put these sesame seeds in there and get them toasty. And this goes actually really fast. You don't really want to move away from your pan um, because they will burn in just a heartbeat and burn sesame seeds are not very good. Nope, or burn, <laughs> or burn <laughs> they chocolate. Are not tasty. Oh yeah, burn chocolate is not good either. All right, so we'll let those toast. 
So I'm going to turn my heat up just a little bit and then we'll, we'll see how this goes. You've got a big fan watching Tiffany Wilkerson. Oh, I love Tiffany. Hi, Tiffany. <laughs> I'm a big All fan of your recipes well. are fantastic. Aww. She has fantastic recipes as well. Yes, she, she is another food for life instructor. Yep. She's been on the show. She says, Cindy is the absolute best. She is my shiro in the kitchen and loves. <laughs> but you, you, awesome. you have a lot. I mean, you, you also, uh, you're, you're a PCRM cooking instructor. You are a, a health coach. You do a lot. Yeah. Yeah. It all ties together. So I do the health coaching. I work with people, um, both online and in person, if they're in the Seattle area, but I work with a lot of people all over the world um, online to do health coaching. I even do cooking classes for those people. Oops. So now I'm starting to toast here. I'm going to give this a little stir as it's going. Um, as these toasts, sometimes they start to pop like popcorn. It's really funny, um, but it's starting to smell kind of toasty. Keep my eye on it. Yeah. So um, I, I love to work with people to help them transition to uh, whole food plant-based eating. Um, I work with a lot of people that have been vegan for a long time um, who suddenly have trouble with um, their weight. And so we help get them off of processed foods um, and we're eating more whole foods. I don't know if you can see, but these are starting to pop like popcorn. Nice. Getting nice and toasty. And pull that off the heat a little bit. And they're gonna start to get a little golden brown. You can use any kind of sesame seed for this. You could use white or brown. These happen to be brown ones, but they all work. Uh, and this was a dry pan. There's no, no water or anything in it. Um, and then I do presentations. Uh, I've done lots of presentations for uh, civic groups and um, for some blue zone groups. So I do cooking classes online for them um, or in person. And just recently started to do in-person cooking classes again, which is so exciting now that the restrictions for COVID have, have um, lo loosened up. Uh, and in fact, later this week, um, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, I'm participating in a health conference in Seattle with a uh, Swedish medical center. Okay, so these are good. I'm gonna turn this off. Uh, and I'm going to pull this out of the plate or onto a plate because they will burn if they sit in this hot pan. Um, so coming up this weekend, this week is a conference by Swedish Medical Center. It's the um, Metabolic Health Conference. And Chef AJ, there are a lot of presenters that have been on your show that are in this conference. It's all You're about. Oh, that's it's so all cool. about. Yeah, it's all about uh, eliminating processed foods, eating more whole foods. So. Um, Sarah Stansik, Stansik is in this conference. Um, Monica Agarwal is presenting. Um, Robert Lustig is presenting. Um, Dr. Joan um, Iflin. Uh, so all the folks that are like the unprocessed people are in this conference. It's really fantastic. God, I so, want to go. Let me Google it. What's it called? And yeah, is so that? it is, um, the link is in uh, my information. Go to my um, go to trymazing.com slash picnic. There's a button down there. You can say, um, see my classes and you can sign up. They're doing simulcast this conference virtually as well. So you can take this conference online. If you're not in the Seattle area, it's going to be fantastic. And I'm doing a cooking presentation on Friday for that um, on the day. It's about brain health. So I'm doing a cooking class for that. Uh, yeah, I hope you can make it. And if you um, are in the medical profession, there is continuing medical education available for that conference as well. Wow. Please say hi. I know all those people. That is so cool. Yeah, I'm just honored to be in the presence of those people. It's just fantastic. It's going to be a great conference. All right. So we're going to make our dressing now. I'm just going to use a magic bullet. You could use a regular blender or a Vitamix, whichever you have. So I've got my toasted sesame seeds. I'll pour that in. Okay. And so for this dressing, very simple, get my ingredients. I have some aquafaba, which is the liquid from a can of beans. So versatile. And it's great to use in a vinaigrette because it makes the dressing clingy. So it will cling to your, your, your vegetables. Um, and now I also have 
So here's my aquafaba. I'm just going to pour this in. And I have some rice wine, vin or not rice wine, rice vinegar. And this happens to be brown rice vinegar. I love brown rice vinegar, um, but you could use regular rice vinegar. I get unseasoned that doesn't have the sugar or the salt. Um, a little bit of soy sauce or tamari, or you could use aminos. And then I have miso. This happens to be a yellow miso. Uh, any type, it, any flavor of miso, you could get white or you could use a red miso as well. That's going to give it really a lot of umami. And that's why there's not a lot of soy sauce in there because there's salt in the miso. And then I have some date paste just for a little bit of sweetness. You can also use maple syrup, but I really like date paste because it still has all the fiber. And that is our dressing. I'm just going to buzz that up in my magic bullet. And that is our dressing. I'm just going to set that aside. So that is in place of mayo for this sandwich. And we're going to make the sandwich now. Clear off my space. You know, I, when I was, I was listening to a podcast that you did before coming on, and I, I love the part of your story where I guess your supervisor was wondering when you were going to stop losing weight because your uniforms were like $1,500 and you kept needing new ones. Yeah, yeah. So as I was uh, changing how I was eating and losing weight, uh, my uniforms didn't fit anymore. And, and the regular uniforms that we wear day to day weren't an issue. It was my firefighting turnouts. Firefighter turnouts are basically custom made for you um, so that they fit so you can move well during a fire situation. Um, they're like wearing giant hot pads and they keep heat out and they keep the moisture out and, and you want them to be the right size to, for safety. And I, they were, weren't fitting me. There's a great video of a helicopter that was over a fire scene where you could see me bring the hose down, put the hose on the ground before I enter the building and hike up my pants before I go in because my pants were falling off. And that's when the department said, you need some new turnouts. So they are $1,500 a set. And I was on my third order for them. And they said, hey, <laughs> would you let us know? Cause we haven't budgeted for all these turnouts and you're, you're, you're spending a lot of money. <laughs> we just need to know if we need to put money aside for your new turnouts. So we're happy for you. We think it's great. Uh, we just need to know. That's so yeah, that is my story. It's funny. So um, for the sandwich, I have a whole grain baguette. Sometimes these can be kind of hard to find, but um, I have a whole grain baguette. I've cut a couple pieces and I've toasted or bis baked it in the oven for about uh, five minutes. So it's crispy on the outside and nice and uh, soft on the inside. And then I have a baked sweet potato and you can use any kind of sweet potato. This just happens to be a red garnet. Um, but you could use a uh, purple Japanese sweet potato would be fantastic. Any kind you have. And this recipe is very convertible. It has um, some vegetables that I use, but you can change out the vegetables. But the sweet potato is great. Um, oftentimes when you get a banh mi that's a vegan banh mi, it will have tofu. I just love sweet potato. And I know, <laughs> Chef AJ, you love sweet potato too. So this is a sweet potato that I baked and I'm just gonna cut some quarter inch rounds out of it. I leave the skin on too. I think the skin is wonderful. Um, I got organic ones and scrubbed them. So just some nice pieces. I'll set those aside. That's gonna be the kind of the meat of our sandwich. Set this here. And then I've got some gorgeous vegetables. So isn't that a beautiful rainbow? Oh my God. I just love this sandwich because it's so beautiful. It is so, literally like the rainbow. It is the rainbow. And that's kind of the theme today. So I have some carrot and I just used um, a spiralizer. You can grate your carrot if you don't have a spiralizer. Then I have um, cucumber. And again, I spiralized that, but you could just cut that into slices um, either with a knife or if you have a mandolin, you could do that. Um, same thing. This is a uh, golden beet. 
Now in the recipe, it talks about using a Chiojia beet. That's a really nice light red one that when you cut into it, looks like a bullseye. It has red, alternating red and white rings. I couldn't find a Chiojia beet anywhere. And usually they're around a lot. So um, I just use a golden beet. Um, you can also use a regular red beet as well. And then this is what's called a watermelon radish. They are so good. They taste like a normal radish, but they're beautiful. They're green on the outside and pink on the inside like a watermelon. Um, normally I will use a purple daikon radish. I couldn't find those. There's a lot of shortages right now um, in our area. So um, we're just gonna use what we have, but you could use a regular radish as well or a regular daikon radish. Um, there's white radishes, red radishes, the black radishes, those were all would be great in this sandwich. So I'm gonna take my baguette and I'm just gonna split it. I'm gonna remember I toasted that. And this is really traditional for a banh mi to have a French baguette. And you can see it's a nice whole grain version. My plate. And we're just gonna layer this up with our sweet potato. And it, the sweet potato on here is so great because it's sweet and creamy and just really satisfying. I think I'll make two. Are you doing a cooking demo at the conference? I am, I am doing, it's called, it's a no brainer. It's foods, your, your patients, their families, and you will love. So I'm doing, it's um, but kind of like a fiesta theme um, at that cooking demo. So I am doing um, a sofritos tofu. So um, kind of a, a recipe that's modeled after Chipotle restaurants, the, their sofritos tofu. Um, and I am doing a mango salsa and a, a brain boosting salad. These are all fantastic food for uh, PCRM food for life recipes. And then I'm also doing guacamole, which is so good. It is a guacamole made with green peas. So uh, it has some avocado in it, but it's a great way to get lots of fiber, decrease the fat and have all the creamy lusciousness of guacamole. And it's a great way to get kids and people that don't eat lots of vegetables to eat some vegetables and they have no idea. And what's fascinating or fabulous is that the restaurant or the hotel that we are doing the conference at is making those things and serving it at lunch. Oh, did you do a taste test with them to make sure they knew how to do it? I, I sent them the recipes. I haven't done the taste test, so hopefully it works out. <laughs> Sometimes it's an adventure to, to do that, but um, uh, they're very, very um, simple recipes. So hopefully they'll, we'll have been okay with them. So here is my cucumber and I've got some, my carrot. We're just layering this on and there's no mayo on here. There's no dressing on here. So this is great to make ahead. Like if you're going to do a picnic, it's not, your bread's not going to get all soggy. If you didn't want to do bread, you could do this as a salad. Um, you could also do this in a wrap would be delicious, just absolutely delicious as well. And then on top of that, a banh mi sandwich traditionally has some really specific herbs. So we're gonna use those same herbs to give that flavor. So I keep my herbs in water like a bouquet um, and I put a plastic bag over it and put it in the refrigerator and your herbs will last forever if you do that. Um, so I've got mint and I've got Thai basil and I have cilantro. And those are um, flavors that are really common in Vietnamese food and definitely included in a banh mi sandwich. So I've got a big piece of mint, put mint on this. And the more herbs, the better. That's just really what makes a banh mi so terrific. This is mint that I got out of my yard and they're humongous because we've had so much water, so much rain this year. And then this is the Thai basil. Very delicious. If you can't find Thai basil, you can use regular basil. No problem at all. And we're just putting these whole. You don't have to cut them up at all. They give so much flavor to this sandwich. It just makes it zing. 
Anybody who has a sandwich is just going to be blown away with these flavors. And they're simple, very simple to make. And then cilantro, just grab some cilantro and put that on there. All right, a little bit more cilantro. Okay, so those, that's the sandwich. It's getting really high. It's like a Dagwood sandwich. And finally, you have your choice. You can put some sprouts or some lettuce on your sandwich. I happen to have some sunflower sprouts. Um, a local farm is selling these beautiful sunflower sprouts. And I had them in my CSA basket this week. So we're going to use those, but you can also use lettuce if you don't have sprouts, you could use mung bean sprouts, alfalfa sprouts, any kind of sprouts that you have. So I'll use sprouts on one and lettuce on the other. And now we have our beautiful sandwich. I will assemble here. We'll put the lid on it and show you what it looks like. So we're just gonna put the lid on. And there is this gorgeous sandwich. Got two of them. Now to serve this, look at this sandwich. Isn't that beautiful? Colorful and crispy. Um, so when you serve your sandwich, you then serve your dressing on the side um, that you simply dress your sandwich. You pour that onto the bread and that's instead of using mayo very refreshing and so if I was on a picnic I would put this in a little container to put on my sandwich when we were serving that rather than doing it ahead. Um, also serve it with some lime give a squeeze of lime was which would be fabulous with the bon mi generally has um, a, a lime that goes with it and then sriracha sauce um, with the Vietnamese bon mi sandwich gen generally traditionally comes with sriracha sriracha sauce. So this is our bon mi. That is fantastic. <laughs> yeah, and I hope that you give that a try. I'm trying to hold it down to the side where you can see all the beautiful layers. Here we go. You can see all the beautiful layers in that sandwich. It's crispy and herbaceous. It's creamy from the sweet potato. And it's an unexpected sandwich that people are just going to be amazed and want more. So that is the bon mi. So that's our first recipe. The second recipe I'm going to do today is a corn salad. So let me clean off my space here and we'll get onto the corn salad. Whoops. So these plates are just beautiful. They say vegan on them. I don't know if you could see. They are by another Main Street Vegan Academy graduate. Um, the, the company is called Elephant Body, Elephant Belly, pottery and she makes absolutely beautiful um pottery and these say vegan on them so i that's, love these that's pots. wait we should have her on the show that's spectacular. yeah you should yeah. all how right long ago, how long ago did you attend main street vegan academy um i attended in 2018 i really um i had started my business and being in the fire service I have never been in quote unquote business. <laughs> and so it was really hard, scary for me to start a business. I just didn't know exactly what to do. And I was concerned about marketing and um, advertising my business because as the fire department, we never had to advertise. People know that when they have emergency, they call 911 and I needed to learn some of these aspects about business. And I also didn't know a whole lot of vegan people and I, it, I wanted the ability to learn from other people that were also doing vegan businesses and great things in the vegan world. So um, I, I took the Main Street Vegan Academy to learn that. And it honestly was one of the best things I have ever done. Victoria is fantastic. I've learned so much from her and the academy. I, I, I went away from there. My head was exploding and I, it propelled my business because on the while I was there, I was making notes on the airplane coming home, and I hit the ground running and never looked back. And I owe all of that to the Main Street Vegan Academy. So, um, if there's anybody who's considering having a vegan business or getting involved with um, vegan advocacy, I totally, absolutely recommend without hesitation. And I've sent lots and lots of people to the Main Street Vegan Academy to do that. So, definitely fantastic. What were some of your favorite courses when you took the academy? 
Well, you, let's you see. Go to a lot um, of academies. You probably attended the fire academy. I know. I'm an academy girl. Um, <laughs> uh, so my favorite courses, and this was in person at um, uh, in New York. Um, it was before the pandemic, but um, so um, we had a class on social media because I didn't know anything about social media. Um, JL Fields came and talked about starting your vegan business, and she had lots of great things to talk about. Um, there were topics that I didn't even know existed. So um, animal rights uh, attorneys came and talked to us. I didn't even know that that was a thing. Um, uh, we learned about clothing, and we learned about um, different foods. So we went to different restaurants in New York City and learned about how they started their business um, in a clothing shop and just really got some great ideas. And, but the best part of it was networking. I have so many people in so many areas of veganism all over the world to connect to. And so if I have a question or a problem, um, just reach out. Uh, we help each other out. Um, I manage the blog for Victoria for the Main Street Vegan blog. Um, and so Victoria posts the blog post at the beginning of the month. And then the next three weeks are all alumni graduates of the Main Street Vegan Academy talking about topics from all over veganism. I just love reading the blog. Um, so I suggest that if you're interested in that, go to MainStreetVegan.com slash blog, and you can look back through years and years and years of really fabulous content from the alumni uh, graduates of the Main Street Vegan Academy. Nice. People are saying yeah. they you take a bite of the sandwich. Oh, <laughs> I know we need um, smell a vision and wonk a vision where I can send that out. That's the one drawback from doing the online classes. All right. So this is a rainbow corn salad. And I have to show you a great trick for getting kernels off the corn. We're going to use fresh corn kernels right off the, the cob of corn. Um, this is a trick from my dad, the person who inspired me uh, to become vegan, who was not vegan himself, but inspired me because of his illness. And in our family, we make corn relish every year. It's a big thing. If I don't make it, my brother cries. And you have to get lots and lots of corn kernels. And it can be really hard to get the kernels off of the corn cob. There's all kinds of tools out there. But this is what my dad had done. And I still, to this day, use this method. This is an angel food can, an angel food cake pan. Now, I don't make angel food cakes anymore, but I still have this pan. You can use a bunt pan or any kind of a cake pan that has the cone in the center. And I have a tray underneath. And you take your ear of corn, and if it has the stem on it, all the better. Put that air in the hole. If you don't have that, you can put it upside down with the thin part. That's gonna hold your corn, your ear of corn. You take a knife and you can cut the corn kernels off. They fall into the cake pan. Sometimes there's little strays. That's what the big pan is for. But you could do a lot of corn this way, and it collects it all into the cake pan. So I always like to share this to people. If I'm teaching a fresh corn recipe, there you go. And now all of my kernels of corn are in the pan. And then I suggest you keep this. I'm going to break this in half. I like to make my own broth with my scraps. So I've got the corn cobs make really fantastic broth. So that's my instant pot container. It's full now. And after class, I'm going to fill that full of water, put it in my instant pot for 10 minutes at high pressure. And I have a fantastic broth. All right. So here's my corn. This is six ears or total of six ears of corn. And corn is a whole grain. It's also a vegetable. It's actually um, declared both, categorized as both. But it's a starchy vegetable though, right? It's a starchy vegetable, yep. So this is our, my grain salad to go with my banh mi. This out of the way. So for this salad, it's again, a rainbow of food. Very simple to put together. I have blueberries red tomato that's been chopped. I have some cherry, orange cherry tomatoes, and I have some red onion. So red onion and me don't necessarily get along all that much, but I noticed that if I went to a restaurant and had a salad or a sandwich that had red onion, 
I didn't have so much problem. It wasn't so hot. And I asked the chef one day, how come I can eat red onions here and I can't eat them at home that are raw? And they said, oh, well, it's because we soak them in water. So anytime I use red onions that I'm gonna do raw, I cut them. So these are finely diced red onion and I've put it in water and I did it yesterday. And then when I go to use them, I'm gonna drain off this water and all that heat and the, that makes it too spicy for me and for a lot of people will leave in that water and you're left with the nice, sweet, um, nice, flavorful onion. So I'm gonna go drain this off. It is a great trick that I got from them and I've been using it ever since. And now I love to put red onion in things. So if red onion bothers you, give that a try. I love red onion. Yeah, I do too. I just think it's really flavorful. It's beautiful. It's got all the beautiful colors, but it just didn't agree with me very much. So I'm so glad to be able to do that. So I've got my corn and I've got my onion and I've got two pint or a pint of blueberries, two cups of blueberries, fresh blueberries. I've got some of those orange cherry tomatoes. You could use any color. Again, I'm just going back to the rainbow because it's so important to eat the rainbow get all of those fantastic phytonutrients and antioxidants. I've got red tomato that I've cut up. You could use red cherry tomato as well. Put that in, get rid of my dishes here. And we're gonna stir this together. Really beautiful. And I heard a saying once is, Things that grow together, go together. And this is really true to this salad. Um, we're gonna cut up some basil. I'm gonna do a chiffonade of basil and I'll explain what that means. I say things like that and people say, English, Cindy, use English. I don't know what chiffonade means. Chiffonade is just a really thin slice of basil. Um, so we're gonna do that and put that in here. Basil and corn and tomatoes and blueberries all kind of are in same season. And so that's why they go so well together in a salad. They grow together, they go together. That's good. I like that. Yeah. I can't even remember where I got that from. So here's some basil. This is regular basil. You could use the Thai basil as well. And I'm just going to take the, some leaves off of this. I'm going to use one bunch of basil. And again, I store it in water like I did my other herbs. Take the leaves off and stack them. Question, does soaking onions remove any nutrients? No, it's not gonna take out considerable amounts. It may take a little bit, but um, the, the, the nutrients are still in the actual onion themselves. I haven't cut them up so small that it would release all of them. So they're still there. Good question though. If you don't want the red onion, you don't have to soak the red onion. I do just so that it's more palatable for me. Um, you could also just use green onions. Those would work or spring onions, something that's a little more mild. Well, you know, I heard that refrigerating it can sometimes do that before you cut it. Because I know sometimes onions are really strong and sometimes they're not. Yeah, that's a good point. We all have to try that, you know, because it is refrigerated. So that might be part of it, what is happening there. It sure makes a difference for me. And a lot of times I'll just use green onions instead. I love All right, so here's my stack of basil and I'm gonna roll it. Somebody said, you roll it like a cigar. Well, I'm not a cigar fan. <laughs> I'm just gonna roll it up since so it's nice and tight. And now I take my knife and I can cut through that and get these beautiful fine shreds. Look how beautiful those are. And that's called chiffonade. Gives you a really beautiful bite. And they're gorgeous to look at. They're not all bruised. You can see the herb in your salad. Okay. So now we have a big pile of beautiful, finely shredded basil that I'm gonna put in my salad. So that's part of the green of our rainbow. That's beautiful. Your sandwich was almost a rainbow too, you know? It was totally a rainbow. Absolutely. There should be rainbows when we go to picnics, right? 
absolutely. Cindy, I Googled how to make onions less potent and it said soaking them in ice water for 20 to 30 minutes or sprinkling them with an acid such as vinegar. Ah, wonderful. Yeah. So like, that's why pickled red onions are so fantastic. Yeah. Cause they're not strong anymore now that I think. Yeah. Yeah. That chef was right on, wasn't they? Weren't they? So there's my beautiful salad. Isn't that great? Rainbow yes. It's very fast and easy to make. I'm going to put it into a serving bowl. So it's prettier to look at. And this salad is so, oh, and I, you know what? I forgot to put the dressing. It's, uh -oh. You don't have to put a dressing on this, but um, if you'd like to, um, it's just vinegar. So I've got some apple cider vinegar, very simply dressed. I'll put part of it in here. I got to talking. I completely forgot what I was doing. Um, so this was just apple cider vinegar, but this is a great place to use some of the California balsamic vinegars. I really love, my favorite is the um, grapefruit. What's your favorite? Oh, of California balsamic. Gosh, I, there's so many. Um, that is a tough one. My favorite, my favorite <laughs> I put you on the is, spot, didn't I? What is my favorite? Well, I really like the smoked hickory. I really do. Oh, yeah. That would give this a good flavor. I mean, a nice smoky flavor. Well, for that one, I think maybe crisp cucumber might be a good one. Oh, wow. That's a great thought. I hadn't thought about that. Or even pineapple. You really can't go wrong with California balsamic. No, no. Yeah. All, and a lemon would be good on here too. Even the, an herb. So here's my beautiful salad. I've got just garnished it simply with some leaves. If you wanted, um, you could put a pinch of salt. I don't really find that it needs it. And then a few grinds of pepper and that's it. Very simple, but it has so many complex flavors from the fruit and the corn and the basil. It's a hit. You can make this and take it to a potluck anytime and they would love it. That is gorgeous. I want to thank Aunt Days for the super chat. This is the small bell when Bailey's in the room because the big bells upset her. Cindy, I was listening to a podcast before we went live. And do you offer like a 72 hour emergency kit? I uh, do you teach a class in that because that sounded fascinating, like to stay. I do. I do. So I have uh, a program that's called Be Your Own Hero. And it is how to build a 72 hour kit. We all ought to have a 72 hour emergency kit in our homes. Um, up here, we have Mount St. Helens and we have Mount Baker, which are volcanoes and we have earthquakes and we have storms. And it's really important to be able to be self-sufficient for at least 72 hours because it takes about that long for emergency services like FEMA to come and help us out. And so what I found is people who were plant-based were having trouble because they would go to buy these 72 hour food kits and they were full of animal products and spam and et cetera. So I have a program that helps you guide you through a 72 hour kit. Um, and I'll put the link in that webpage at trimazing.com slash picnic where you can go. It's all self-guided. You get a, an email once a week with a shopping list and things to do to put your emergency kit together. It's more than food um, has um, information about how to, turn on and turn off your power, your water, your gas, all these things that I discovered as a firefighter were really important that people didn't have training in, you can get from this class. That, that sounds like fantastic. Yeah, yeah, we have had hundreds of people go through that program. And eventually my plan is to make a longer program which will extend it out to be two weeks um, so that you have supplies for that as well. All right, so. So we don't run out of time. My next recipe is called Paragon Orange Pineapple Chia Pudding. This is a blast from my past as a kid. When I was a kid, we didn't go out to eat very often. It was very, very special, very rare. But if we did go out to eat, we went to a Chinese restaurant called The Paragon. And the Chinese food was great. But our favorite part of the whole meal, when you ordered a family meal, you got this neon orange sticky uh, ta orange tapioca pudding that was phenomenal. It was our favorite part of the whole meal. It came in a chilled little glass cup and accompanied with it were um, the little half and half creamers for your coffee. <laughs> and you would take that chia pudding. It was just bright orange. That not wasn't chia, it was tapioca. And you put a little bit of that cream on the top and it was just the best dessert ever. Well, that restaurant doesn't exist anymore. I was hungry for this recipe. So I thought, I bet I could do this with chia seed. So that's exactly what we're going to do today. Much healthier version. I'm sure the one that we had 
uh, was probably made with orange jello because it was just that neon color. Very simple, again, kind of rainbow-ish because eating the rainbow is so important. There's a thing and today. This is yeah, some so Paragon was the name of the restaurant? Paragon was the name of the restaurant. So that's why it's called Paragon uh, Orange uh, Pineapple Chia Pudding. So it's the Paragon, <laughs> the pinnacle of desserts. So um, I'll change my view so you can see. So very simple. Um, I have one and a half cups of crushed pineapple and you can buy crushed pineapple. It's also drained. Um, you can buy crushed pineapple or you could use fresh um, or canned rings of pineapple and just pulse it in your food processor. So it's just crushed, very easy to do. Um, and then I have two cups of orange juice. This is mandarin orange juice. I squeezed myself. So it's really, really pulpy. I like the pulp. Um, I think it's better for us to have the pulp, not just straight juice and it gives nice body. But if you just had orange juice, that's fine. These are mandarin oranges because I think mandarin goes really well with Asian food. And then um, I've got three tablespoons of lemon juice. This is important. It doesn't taste right without that zing from the lemon. And I think it was the citric acid in the orange jello that they used to make this uh, tapioca pudding originally. And now I've got some white chia seed. Um, you can use any color of chia seed. I like to use the white in this because it looks more like tapioca. I'll just blend this together. I'm going to show you the difference between white and brown chia seeds in a moment. So you just mix this together and you put this in your refrigerator overnight and that gives a chance for those chia seeds to soak up the liquid and get plump and they look just like tapioca. All right, I'll put this aside and I'll get my finished pudding to show you. Mm -hmm. So I made this yesterday. This is so funny, Cindy. Elizabeth, who's going to be on the show tomorrow for her 70th birthday, says, are you a picnic specialist? No. <laughs> well, I'm not a picnic specialist. I love picnics. They're like my favorite thing. We love to camp. Um, so, uh, you know, we uh, have this little teardrop trailer. Um, and these are foods that I would put in my little refrigerator in my teardrop trailer and have when we were, were camping. I just think this would be so good. So this is my finished pudding and it looks like tapioca pudding, really delicious. Um, you can put this in little containers, um, but we need to have the, we need to have the half and half. So instead of half and half, what I'm gonna use is I'm gonna make some cashew cream. Very, very simple to make. Um, I have some cashews and a date. So this is a third a cup of cashews and one date. And I soaked it overnight. You can soak it for a couple hours um, with some warm water and drain it. Put that in my blender. And I have a half a cup of water. It's fresh water. I don't like to use the same water that I soak the nuts in because sometimes it can have a little bit of an aftertaste. And let's grab our blender. And we're going to zip this right up. If you didn't have um, a high speed blender, you could use a regular speed blender. Um, you can omit this if you didn't want that. Um, you could use some plant-based yogurt would be good on here as well. The other thing that I recently discovered, and maybe you have discovered this before me, Chef AJ, is that PB2 brand now has cashew powder. Did you know that? Did not know that. I knew about the almond. I did not know about the cashew. Yeah. So they just came out with cashew. And so in the recipe, if you download it from my website, um, that tramazing.com slash picnic, um, I talk about using this instead of actual cashew. So it cuts down the fat. Um, so for that, 
Um, I use six tablespoons of this cashew powder um, with a half a cup of water and the date. And then you can blend that up really easy. A lot less fat that way. It is a little different flavor profile um, because I think that the cashews that they use for this might be toasted. So it tastes a little nuttier, but it's a really fast way, especially if you don't have a high speed blender. So we've got our little glass cup. I'm going to put some of our chia pudding in there. I'm going to change the view so you can get a much better view. And this is so delicious. You don't even need the cream on it. Very delicious. It looks like tapioca pudding. Very refreshing. I know right now they're selling at the grocery store these um, fruit and chia seed. They, they're sweetened with artificial sweetener. I don't want to eat that. This is really the same thing, much better. Um, they have a pear and blackberry. They have a citrus one. This you can make at home um, for a fraction of the price. And then you can top it with a little bit of our cashew cream. So you can make this ahead, put it in little containers and take it with you to your picnic for a nice fruity, refreshing dessert. So good. It's like a creamsicle. Oh boy. Can you come cook for me? <laughs> Let's do that. We'll cook for each other. Cause I would love to have some of your cooking classes and your food as well. I forgot to talk about or show the difference between the two different colors of chia seeds. So let me show you really quick. So, um, uh, here is the white chia and here is the brown chia. They both work the same and there's no difference in flavor. It's just the color. And I think for this dessert, it looks prettier with the white, but if all you have is brown, do that. That's, that's what I do most of the time. Yeah. It's easier for I, me to find the regular brown chia seeds. I, mean, I order the white sometimes from Amazon, but I've seen them at Whole Foods, but they are prettier, you know? They are pretty. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So um, let me bring everything out to show again, everything that I made today. These are things you could make for your picnic. They're with very simple whole ingredients. So we have our beautiful banh mi sandwich, which is the Vietnamese inspired uh, sandwich with the sweet potato and the rainbow of vegetables in that. And then I have, where did I put my salad? Isn't that funny? I said it somewhere. I don't think you ate it yet. I don't think you ate it yet. I covered it up with my recipes. Here we go. And we have our beautiful corn salad. So our rainbow inspired picnic food that you can make and have at your next picnic, but you could also make at any kind of event. You can just make it to have for your lunch or your dinner. Oh my God. Cindy, do you have a cookbook? I mean, I, I, you know, that people can buy, or are you going to write one? Um, I'm hoping to write one. Um, well, I will <laughs> endorse, let me tell you right now, I will endorse that cookbook. Okay. Fantastic. Yeah. I, um, I have the unseafood cookbook. And in fact, if, uh, if your listeners go to, again, this, I'm going to sound like a broken record, trimazing.com slash picnics, you can get an e-cookbook that I did for, for that. They were, it was actually also in the, the ultimate weight loss bundle. Yeah, that, that um, was fantastic. Well, you know, yeah. uh, uh, Tiffany said you you may not be a picnic specialist, but you are a mock seafood specialist. <laughs> yeah, you know, I really like, oh, do I do more seafood or do I switch it up and do something different? I thought I would do something different today because not everybody is a seafood lover. And um, but yeah, so there's some really great recipes in that e, that e cookbook. There's 20 recipes for making plant based seafood that that people who love seafood love to eat. And um, but uh, yeah, so someday on my list of things to do is a cookbook. And you know how those things, you know, you guys lists get longer and longer and we get busy, but you know, I, I'm going to work on that for sure. But um, if anybody's interested in more recipes, I can go to my website. I have a lot of recipes on my website. Um, you can sign up for my blog where um, when I have new recipes, you'll get emailed right away with the new recipes. These recipes are all on my blog. Um, and then if you're interested in health coaching, um, there is a link on there to contact me for health coaching. And through the month of July, if you uh, contact me and mention Chef AJ, I'll give you a discount on health coaching oh, on you. any of the programs that I have. And um, 
I uh, hope that uh, you can uh, join me for some classes. I'm not having any classes this summer. I take a break during the summer and find that people want to be outside, not in a cooking class. Um, but my classes will start up again uh, in the fall. So keep an eye out for that. You can sign up to get notified for classes. And again, it also gets, um, I send that on, on my mailing list. And let's see what else. Yeah, and if you're in the Seattle area and you're interested in presentations, get a hold of me. I'd love to do that like I'm doing this week at the health conference. Uh, take a look at the Metabolic Health Conference um, for another cooking demo from me and a lot of great information from tons of experts in the field of eating unprocessed foods. And last but not least, thank you to Victoria Moran of the Main Street Vegan Academy. Um, take a look at her program. I can't endorse it enough. She is fabulous. She's a powerhouse in the plant-based world. You will find no bigger champion than Victoria Moran. And so I owe a huge thank you for um, where I am today in my business and really for being here today. Oh, that's fantastic. We have so many nice comments. Pamela says, thank you so much. Everything looks awesome. Gigi says, I learned so much. Thank you. And uh, uh, Veronica says, amazing recipes and demo. I'm curious, like you're a very good presenter in addition to being, you know, very talented chef and recipe creator. Did that come naturally to you from being a fire captain, having to communicate with people or, or were these skills that you had to learn along the way? Well, you know, being a fire captain really did require a lot of presentation skills and a lot of organization. Um, you know, I also was an instructor in the fire service. So I taught a lot of classes on, on medical and for firefighting and fire command and control. And so that gave me a lot of practice throughout my career. Um, and then also for community groups, we did a lot of presentations for community groups about being fire safe and um, preparing your home for, uh, again, to prevent loss during wildlands fire season. And yeah, so that gave me a lot of practice, but, um, you know, it's just practice makes perfect. The more of these that I've done, the more comfortable I am. And um, it's so much so that we, I, I have a studio kitchen now. Um, well, just for I my wish, classes. I wish you every success at the conference because I took a look at the uh, at the presenters and a lot of them are from the low carb world. So, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, there the, there's only a couple of us that are plant based, um, Sari Sansik and Monica Argual, but the majority of the others are about unprocessed food, but they are not necessarily plant based. But I love the fact that plant-based is now making it into these mainstream medical conferences. Yeah, well, I can't, I can't wait to hear about it. I want to thank Julie Casey for her super chat donation. And you are just very talented, Cindy. What can I tell you? I'm sure your food tastes delicious. People keep asking what the jars are behind you. Oh my goodness. So because this is my studio kitchen. Um, so when the pandemic hit, I couldn't do classes in person and I was wanting to teach food for life classes. And so I started doing them in my kitchen, in my home, What meant it took over our whole house The you know, the kitchen's in the center of the house. And I stored all of my tripods and cameras in our dining room, which we couldn't use for a year and a half. <laughs> and my husband was like sequestered upstairs in a room while I was doing the class. He couldn't make any noise. And we thought, you know, this is something that's not temporary. This is going to continue for a while and it's a great opportunity for me to reach people all over the world for cooking classes not just in my local area what could we do to do cooking classes in a space that would be less disruptive to our house so um, we built in our basement a room for the studio kitchen so it's not a kitchen and it's a small room i didn't have room to put up cabinets so um, as a display i have my shelves with all of my favorite dried beans and grains. So these are beans. I've got mung beans and pinto beans, scarlet runner beans that I grow. Um, there's some adzuki beans, some split peas. And then over here are some grains. I've got the chia seeds here, um, different types of quinoa, and barley and brown rice. And then right here, I did a class on lentils recently. And these are um, six different lentils that you can get. There's so many different kinds. It's just mind blowing how many lentils there are. So yeah, and then I've got some storage with uh, some dishes and so forth. Yeah, you know, I got to introduce you to Rip. I think you need to be on his podcast. 
<laughs> thank you. Thank you. I would I'll, love that. I mean, I, I, I'll see what I can do. People, people a lot of times say, because I've been on a podcast, I can't get people on. I can make suggestions. I wouldn't believe how many people write me every day to get them on rich roll as if like I have <laughs> the power to do that. You know what I mean? So anyway, you're, you're wonderful. Thank you so much, Cindy. Thank you, Chef AJ. It was a thrill to be here and uh, I'd be happy to come back anytime. Well, let, I'm going to text you when I'm off because I want to get you as a regular on the schedule. Okay, wonderful. I would love to do that. Thank you. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow for another fabulous cooking demo with Elizabeth Manser. She is coming on for her 72nd birthday because she came on for her 70th and her 71st. So this is now a theme and she's going to be making a vegan Mediterranean stuffed artichoke appetizer, a chocolate mousse and a mocktail. Take care, Cindy. And thanks so much. That was a wonderful menu. Thank you so much. Thrilled to be here.